As we dive into the internal components of the x-ray tube, we have two main features that we're going to look at. One is the anode on the left, which is, has a positive charge, and the other is the cathode on the right that has the negative charge. There are two different types of anodes that you will see in x-ray imaging equipment. The first is a stationary anode. This type of anode is typically found in a dental x-ray machine. The other type of anode is a rotating anode. This rotating anode is used in general purpose radiography. Almost all of the x-ray equipment that you will encounter is going to be the rotating anode type. There are three main functions of the anode. One is to be an electrical conductor. Two is to provide mechanical support and three, to be a thermal dissipator. The anode is an electrical conductor because it receives the electrons from the cathode, then it conducts those electrons through the tube and out to the rest of the circuit. The second function of the anode is to provide mechanical support. All this does is allow the tungsten to be attached to the rotating anode. The third function of the anode is to be a thermal dissipator, which means to move heat. What's really interesting is that as the electrons come from the cathode and hit the anode, 99% of those electrons' kinetic energy is converted to heat not x-rays. That means that only 1% of the electron's kinetic energy is actually converted to x-rays. Heat dissipation is the major engineering hurdle in designing tubes. The anode itself is comprised of two parts. One is the base and second is the target. The base is made out of molybdenum which has a lower mass density than tungsten, making the anode overall lighter and easier to rotate. The target shown here is the actual tungsten, which is a mixture of both tungsten and rhenium, which provides mechanical strength during rotation. Tungsten was chosen because of four main qualities. One is its high atomic number, two, is it's an effective thermal dissipator, three, it has a high melting point, and four, it is very malleable, meaning it can bend easily. As electrons come over from the cathode to the anode, they bombard the target of the anode, producing a lot of heat. To spread that heat over a large area, the anode spins. This allows the heat to transfer and not to be confined to one point. Other benefits of a rotating anode, besides it allows heat to not be confined to one point, is that it also allows for a higher tube current, which means we can have a shorter exposure time. The rotating anode can spend anywhere from 34,000 to 10,000 revolutions per minute, which is about 57 to 167 revolutions per second. Also, the rotating anode spins due to an electromagnetic induction motor. There are two main ways a tube can fail because of the anode. The first way is through anode cracking. Anode cracking is caused by heat because the tube was not properly warmed up. If you make a large exposure on an anode that's not warmed up, it can either cause pitting on the anode target or cracking along the anode target. Anode cracking causes total tube failure. A much less common cause of tube failure is when the ball bearings become damaged. The ball bearings usually become damaged because of heat conduction along the neck of the rotor, but ball bearing damage does cause total tube failure.